Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we are sharing with you our top 10 best Amtrak routes and the two worst. We've ridden most of the Amtrak routes now, and we do definitely have some favorites and a couple least favorites. <laughs> so we'll get to those. We're going to count these down in reverse order, starting with number 10. So let's jump right into it of best routes, because there are, this top 10 is packed with routes you're going to want to do. Uh, and those last two are two you might want to avoid. <laughs> but uh, number 10 is going to be the Maple Leaf. Yes, and the Maple Leaf... Uh, runs between New York and New York City and Toronto and back. That's a beautiful route. Um, it's absolutely stunning. You're going to see so many beautiful things along the way there and back. Um, and you do stop and do a border crossing there, which is going to make this a really interesting ride. Yeah, you also have the option of having business class, which we rode on on the Maple Leaf or Coach. Both are great. Uh, there's food service available. I will say we rode this in December and I would probably ride this in the summer because you're going to do some of the crossings at nighttime if you go in the winter and you'll have kind of a prettier ride longer into the day if you do this at night. Mm -hmm. uh, when you're on this train, you do want to ride going north. You'll want to ride on the left-hand side uh, if possible because that way you'll, you'll get to see the river uh, going up most of the way. But uh, it is nice views both ways out of the train. Yeah, and not just on the U.S. side, but also into um, the Canadian side as well, riding through Niagara Falls. Yeah, next number nine is kind of similar. This is how we rode back down to the United States, <laughs> is the Cascades. After we rode across all of Canada on the Canadian, the Cascades is going to take you from Vancouver back into the U.S., and in our case, uh, we took it to Seattle. Yes, and again, a beautiful ride, and you'll be doing another border crossing, but coming back, for us this time around, is coming back into the U.S., so that was a little bit different crossing than going into Canada, and they can obviously reverse depending on where you're coming from, but those were beautiful rides as well. It was beautiful at night, which is, we were going from Vancouver to Seattle, so it was in the evening, but if you're riding this going in the other direction, it's during the day, even more beautiful uh, views that way of the water just really gorgeous views yeah we had a great time on this train we were in business class on this one again and it was really nice car tenants were wonderful this was just a great ride i thought all the way around yeah it was really good and great service and um there was the they did have a, a little cafe there as well so it was nice to have all of that just right there on the train easy peasy all right, number eight is going to be two trains in one. This is the Silver Service, Silver Star, and Silver Meteor. These both are going to take you from New York to Miami, and it is basically the best full East Coast uh, ride you can do. It's overnight on a train. This is a Viewliner train, so you will get that really nice Viewliner roomette if you get that. Uh, if you're in a bedroom, those are going to be fabulous as well. So you book this one, just hope to get a Viewliner 2 car. <laughs> I was gonna just going to say that. You're going to be good to go. <laughs> yeah, that'd be really nice if you get that. If you start seeing, if you walk into your train car and it's got that wood paneling and yeah. the, the seats are pink, you are good to go. If you see blue seats, mm, it's going to be okay. <laughs> it's going to be okay. Yeah. You're going to be okay, but the pink is definitely the way to go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Silver Star, Silver Meteor. We love these routes because... We do tend to go to uh, Florida quite a bit and go to Miami quite a bit because we also like to cruise and we almost always cruise out of Miami or New York. And these, this goes both, this goes from one to the other. So we have done a cruise in New York, taken us to Miami, done a cruise there, and it's just a great way to, to get there and one of our favorite routes. Yeah, we do like that, and it is very useful and helpful to us. <laughs> Number seven is going to be the Lakeshore Limited, another route out of New York. So all the routes out of New York that are sleeper cars are going to be Viewliners, so this is another Viewliner route, and this one goes from New York to one of our other favorite cities, which is Chicago. 
Yes, and the views here are also going to be beautiful, not just coming out of New York, but then when you wake up the next day and you're kind of coming across the Midwest, um, it's actually beautiful when you're riding on the train, you get these gorgeous views of some of the areas in the Midwest that you wouldn't normally see from a car. So I do love riding on the Lakeshore Limited. Plus I love the approach into Chicago um, on this ride as well. So <laughs> I'm a sucker for the Chicago skyline. So I like riding in there on this one. Number six is gonna be the Acela. And this is going to take you from DC all the way up to Boston if you want. Yes, and we do love going to Boston. Now we haven't been in a little bit, but we have been on the Acela quite often just to different places, but we have been all the way up to Boston and that's a great ride. It's easy and the cool thing, although it's not a, a sleeper train, um, this is actually the only one on the list that is not a sleeper train. So the cool thing about the Acela is that it does uh, some high speed running as well. Yeah, there is also, instead of coach, uh, they they have kind of like first class on this one so you really all the seats in the Acela are good though if, if you don't want to pay that extra money um, don't don't spend more money than you need to because you're just getting really a meal your seat will be a little bit bigger but we love all the seats on the Acela. It's it's a great train. Yes, it's it's unique because it's either it's only business class and first class there's no coach regular coach seats so it is kind of uh you know regarded as a little bit more upscale if you're looking you know for more budget then you would go with something like the northeast regional but this train in particular because it has the business and first class we like the acela and that's why i made the list yeah uh number five is going to be the texas eagle now this is amtrak's longest route chicago to los angeles there's several Chicago to Los Angeles routes, but this one takes kind of a long loop down through Texas, and you get to see the most of the U.S. Uh, country in one route. So if you're coming from overseas, you want to just see a ton of the country, Texas Eagle's going to do that for you. It really will. You are going to see everything practically that the U.S. has to offer. The only thing you're going to miss out on, well, actually you won't, um, is the South Southeast, which is basically just Florida. But you'll get a good taste of just about everything else, especially when it you know turns up towards um, Chicago. There's a lot to see. Oh, my goodness. You're just going to see so much. You get to see all of what America has to offer. Yeah, interesting thing about this train though is it is a superliner train. Uh, the rest of these will be superliner trains because they leave out of Chicago. And the Texas Eagle is going to have the observation car, but only for part of the ride. It's also only going to have traditional dining for part of the ride. From, you know, the Texas part to Chicago, this basically serves as a more limited train. From Texas west to Los Angeles, it's your full uh, train services with the uh, observation car and traditional dining. So keep that in mind. A lot of people book the Texas Eagle. They might book it from Texas to Chicago. And they're like, ah, it wasn't that great because they were on the wrong half of it. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, what happens is that essentially when you leave from L.A., it's the Sunset Limited and the Texas Eagle are one. And then when you get to Texas, they break up in the middle of the night and Sunset Limited continues on. They take the observation car and the traditional dining room with them. And then the rest of the train continues on up to Chicago from uh, Texas. And that's, they don't add another observation car and they don't add another dining car. It just all goes with the Sunset Limited to, you know, obviously cut down on cost and fuel. And so you continue on as, you know, a, a completely different ride, really, the two parts of it. Yeah, if your Texas Eagle was like that the whole way, traditional the whole way i think it would rank one spot higher here mm -hmm. uh, but the, but it doesn't so the southwest chief does and so that comes in at the fourth spot which is one of the better long distance train rides you can do yeah and there's actually a lot of really cool things to experience on the southwest chief one of the super cool things about it if you haven't seen our video on Route 66, we love Route 66 and we've done it before in a car. But the great thing about the Southwest Chief is it follows quite a bit of Route 66 
on the train tracks, which is also very cool. Yeah. So you're riding by so those Route 66 towns, looking out the window at them. Sometimes, you know, sitting, eating dinner, watching those, you know, the, <laughs> the, the motels going by. A lot of really cool stuff to experience on that one. The other interesting thing as well is, you know, just kind of riding through the, the desert there as well. It's just beautiful. Yeah, there isn't really a better side of this train. It is, I would say the Southwest Chief is four because it's scenic, but it's not as scenic as the next three. I think people that ride the Southwest Chief for the first time and they haven't been on any other, sometimes they're a little disappointed in the amount of scenery because it's not like you're going through the Grand Canyon uh, or seeing any of that from the train. But it is still very scenic. It's just not as good as the next few. Mm -hmm. uh, which number <laughs> yeah. three is going to be the Coast Starlight. Oh, wow. I mean, it's all in the name. The Coast Starlight. You're riding down the coast. Um, and when you hit, once you start to see that water, you're just like glued to the window. <laughs> We've done it multiple times. And I can tell you that every single time we ride it, I am taking pictures and taking video clips out the window on my phone just to look at later because it is so beautiful. It is. This train goes from Seattle to Los Angeles or the opposite direction. And basically the California section is going to be where you're going to see the water. And by see the water, I mean you are <laughs> two or three feet you from You feel the water. like there are several points. For, when you first start seeing the water, it's a ways away. And you're like, yeah. oh, that's really pretty. And you're excited. You're like, oh, wow, that's really cool. But literally just like 30 minutes later, you're so close that it feels like if you could put your hand out the window, you could put your hand in the water. It looks like we're just gliding right next to the water. It's really quite wild. And just watching the waves. And if you're there, like we've been through there on the Coast Starlight, like uh, uh, Memorial Day weekend and people were just camping at the beach and you could see all of that from the train. And it was just such a cool experience. Absolutely love the Coast Starlight, can you tell? <laughs> yeah, Coast Starlight is a great one. And biggest question we get on that one is, how can I get a room facing the water? How can you guarantee that? And the short answer is, really, you can't, because you're gonna get there and there's no way to know which way the train car will be facing. So you could get room four, and maybe last time you had room four and it was facing it, the train could be flipped. Room four could be on the other side. There's really just no way to know. So there is one way to guarantee it, I think, and that is if you were going to do a bedroom, because even the bedroom, you, it, it could be flipped the wrong way, uh, where you're facing mm -hmm. the wrong way. But if you were going to do a bedroom and spend that money, you might be wise to think about, if this is like the only time you're ever going to do it, get two roomettes for about the same price as the bedroom get them across the hall from each other. You'll have to call in and do this. Say, I want two roomettes. I want them directly across the hall from each other. Then you'll have like kind of like a two room suite and whichever side the water is on, you can sit in there during the day. And at night, you have the advantage of both sleeping on the lower bunk mm -hmm. instead of someone having to go to the top. So we have seen people do this. It is basically the only way you can guarantee yourself uh, the experience of doing that. Mm -hmm. Other than the only other thing you could do is if you get the family bedroom, you'll be able to see out both sides mm -hmm. as well. Yeah, that's on the bottom. You'll have windows on both sides. Other than that, you can grab yourself a spot in the observation car in the South Sea Sightseer Lounge, or um, you can also, sometimes they'll allow you to sit in the dining car and uh, look out the windows there. You'd have to check with your attendant. Sometimes they're not okay with that but just check with them and see if it's okay. Sometimes they'll let you sit in there if there's not enough room in the observation car. So that's the other option. Also, sometimes in the hallway uh, by where the bedrooms are, obviously not blocking the windows for the bedrooms, but like at the end of the hall in that little corner, you could sit there sometimes and you know look out there as well. And that's a good spot also to watch from. All right, number two is very underrated. A lot of people don't talk about it, but it is definitely the second most scenic route. Uh, that is the Empire Builder from Chicago to Seattle or Portland. It, it kind of splits once it gets to Washington and I'll go to either Seattle or Portland, but this is an amazing route. This was stunning and I was not prepared for how beautiful it was going to be. Mm -hmm. I thought it's the most northern route that Amtrak takes 
and it just it's so beautiful you're you're seeing such a you're doing a mississippi uh, river crossing you're going through some beautiful parts of the country up in the north going through glacier national park and it actually uh, the east part of the park and it actually um we we got there our train was running actually a little bit late and we got to see it at sunset which was yeah. even more beautiful and then on top of that uh you're following the columbia river gorgeous gorgeous views there up through the cascades and then you think okay well that's it that's all the good stuff no because then you get down <laughs> into washington and you're right up along the puget sound the water is right outside the window it feels like you can just hop out and run into the beach right there it's stunning beautiful yeah and without a doubt on this route you want to be on the north side of the train so again there's really no way to guarantee that but <laughs> you do want to be on the north side uh, because you're going to see Glacier National Park to the north and that's also going to be the side that you're going to be able to see Puget Sound from mm -hmm. as well so keep that in mind if you when you get your room to determine whether you're going to need to stake out a spot in the observation car. Uh, <laughs> All that right. brings us to the number one route. That which, takes us to number one, and I bet you you can guess what it is. <laughs> yeah, it is the California Zephyr, of which course. is pretty much widely regarded as the best route in America, and it is beautiful. Uh, I would caution people, I've heard a lot of people that say, oh, we got on the California Zephyr in Denver and we went to Chicago. You have missed the entire best part of the route. <laughs> the best part is from Denver to San Francisco. So outside of that, the route is kind of average, just mm -hmm. like the... Yeah, it's okay. It's okay, but... But it's not wow, okay? Yeah. If you want the wow part of California Zephyr, don't get on in Denver and go east. You can get on in Denver... But go west. <laughs> That's right. Go west. <laughs> go west, young man. <laughs> uh, because you are then going through all the uh, the Colorado Rocky Mountains, the, ca the the canyons. It is just absolutely breathtaking and beautiful. Now, I will say on this one, you want to be on the south side of the train. That's the best. The best views are from the south. Uh, there are also good views from the north, though. But if you're on the north, when you get to the canyon you do want to be in the observation car or the dining room uh, to make sure you, you can see that. Mm -hmm. There's actually one more secret spot where you can get great views from and choose whichever side you want. And that's actually downstairs, um, right by the bathrooms. The doors that you walk in and out of um, have windows on them. <laughs> and usually there's nobody down there. So you can just go down there and take some video and some pictures if you like. And there's no waiting. Usually there's nobody down there. So that's the secret spot. <laughs> All right. Those are the 10 best routes on Amtrak. But we promised you also mm. the two worst. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, we love all the Amtrak routes, but <laughs> these are the ones that we try to avoid the we most. We hate to poo-poo any routes, but if we have to nitpick, we did pick two out. We did pick two for you here. Number, <laughs> the, the first, or the second to worst route is going to be the Hiawatha. And this is from Chicago to Milwaukee. And it's not that there's anything terrible about the Hiawatha. You're not going to get stranded or anything like that. <laughs> no. But there's just nothing good about it. Uh, there's not anything special, any anything that kind of pulls it out of the bunch. <laughs> yeah, there's no view whatsoever. Uh, there's just nothing to see. And then on top of that, there's literally no services on this train. There's no food, which was a shock to us. <laughs> Uh, we got on, we're like, oh, we'll eat on the train. We always eat on the Amtrak Cafe. It's pretty good. We got on the Hiawatha. We were like, hey, uh, where's the cafe? And then the, the attendant... The very humorous attendant. She said to us, oh, what you do to get food on this train is you go to Google and you Google some food, and then you just look at it on your phone. <laughs> <laughs> we laughed for like the rest of the way to Chicago. Because it was a good thing we brought a couple of snacks with us, though. <laughs> Uh, yeah, so the Hiawatha just doesn't have any any redeeming qualities. Mm -hmm. It's just one class. It's just all coach, um, so nothing special there. And it's not that you're not you're not riding like Rob said through anywhere special. You are. It's just that you can't see anything because it's literally lined the the entire route practically is lined with trees. 
So all you're seeing is trees basically from, you know, Milwaukee all the way down to Chicago. <laughs> okay, so if you've gotten this far, you have probably been on Amtrak before, and you probably have an idea of what your worst route is. Uh, so leave that in the comment right now for us. We'll see if it's the same as ours. But I'm not even sure how you say this one properly. <laughs> but I'm going to try it here. I'm sure someone will correct us in correct the comments. Correct us in the comments. <laughs> this is the Pierre Marquette. And it is the route from Grand Rapids to Chicago. Now, Grand Rapids, great city. That's where I was born, Grand Rapids, Michigan. <laughs> so we have a lot of reason to take this route. The problem with this route is, <laughs> like the Hiawatha, there's just nothing good about it. But on top of that, the only time you can go from Grand Rapids to Chicago is at 6 a.m. So if you want to go from Chicago to Grand Rapids, spend the weekend, you have to come back at 6 a.m. And <laughs> that's just crazy. I mean, maybe people are trying to get from Chicago to, or Grand Rapids to Chicago to go to work, but... I mean, if that's what you're doing, just move to Chicago. There yeah. shouldn't be a route just for that. But that is so early to ride a train like this that it is just simply not worth it. I would rather <laughs> just rent a car and drive to Chicago from Grand Rapids. Absolutely. And I think that's the difference between the Pierre Marquette and the Hiawatha. Is The Hiawatha does offer several runs a day back and forth between the two cities. So it's perfect. You know, not as, that's why it wasn't the last one, not as bad, but the Pier Marquette, if you're coming from Grand Rapids, it's kind of not fun at all to get up, you know, at 5 a.m. to yeah. get all ready and whatnot, and make it down to the station and leave at 6 a.m. It's really quite early. Yeah, so that's our worst one. We would love to know what your worst one is. <laughs> and if you disagree or agree with some of our uh, best routes let us know about that too <laughs> give us your little order in the comments so all right guys thank you so much for watching we'll see you guys next time